tickled to death to be sitting here with uh, three folks from the community who are going to throw some questions my way for a radio program, uh, WGCR, over in Pisgah Forest, which uh, has good coverage over Transylvania County. Grateful for this opportunity. I don't know what the questions are. I prefer it that way. Uh, I'd like you guys to throw some spontaneous stuff at me and uh, let, let's see if I can think on my feet. And I hope you'll challenge me. And uh, I know you have a list of questions, but feel free to, to wing it. I like to do these unrehearsed, and this is a great opportunity to do that. So let's jump in and let's talk about the 11th District and the nation. And questions can be about uh, district issues, national issues, or international issues. Uh, I'll take them all on. So who wants to go first? All right. Um, what, if any, specific new proposals would you support to help our troops, our younger veterans, returning from Afghanistan and Iraq? Well, I certainly think we owe them a, a debt of gratitude, and, and more importantly, we owe them a fair shot at getting back into the society on a good footing. Uh, good health care services, um, recovery services for those who transitional issues, PTSD and so forth. And I'm a big fan of the GI Bill in one form, fashion or the other. I think we took the heart of that back out and the uh, heart out of that program in the 80s and we lost something in the, in, in the deal. The truth is most people who come, most of our young men and women coming back from Iraq are coming back intact and are going to be an asset to our uh, culture for a lifetime. They've learned lessons there that will stand the test of time and serve us well. But there, there are good. Any time you're you're faced with war, it, it it lays a heavy hand on hearts and minds, and and we need to help them make that transition back in every reasonable means we can. Carl, way back when uh, Dwight David Eisenhower warned against the military-industrial complex and the consequences thereof, how in the world can we start reducing our uh, spreading troops all over the world? Well, I'm not a fan of foreign entanglements. Uh, we still have 30 to 50,000 troops in Germany. I think that's insane. And I know there are a lot of arguments for it, but I, they're not persuasive to me. Uh, we're not able to be the world's policemen. Uh, we still have all kinds of troops in Japan, uh, Okinawa, Korea, Korea uh, all, uh, almost every country in the world. We have uh, uh, every major country in the world. We have troops stationed. And, and I, I, uh, I, I think those foreign entanglements create great risks for our uh, young men and women and for our culture and for our economy. So I'm not going to be a fan of that. I'll, I'll argue against, well, well my basic position would be we, we're having a hard time managing America. What makes us so arrogant is to believe we can effectively manage the world. We, we can. We can be engaged. We can support free trade, communication, good relationships. But trying to police the world is beyond our capacities, both economically and, and practically speaking. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look, you know, we hear all the time, pull out of Iraq. Well, we need to do that when we've won. But before we pull out of Iraq, let's get out of Germany. Let's get out of Korea. Let's get out of all these other places that we're trying to keep up with. And really, as we do that, feeding their economies instead of ours. Um, Mr. Mumpower, one of the things that a lot of Americans are concerned about is taxes, and specifically, I'd like to know if you favor or oppose increasing uh, the payroll taxes, the Social Security retirement system, Medicare and Medicaid, in order to use that technique again to try to save Social Security. Well, the first thing you always do is try to stop the leak in the boat. Um, and to, to throw more money in uh, before we do that would be very short-sighted. I'm a conservative Republican. I'm a real one, and I'm no fan of making government bigger. I like big people uh, over big government. You don't get both. Uh, you only get one of the two, and I, I, I like to see us be bigger. And the more taxes we feed into government, the more government spends. Um, that said, Social Security is, is quickly marching toward ins uh, insolvency. And the fixes are going to require sacrifices on everyone's part. Beginning, however, that process has to begin by stopping the federal government from robbing the Treasury and robbing Social Security funds. They do that in many ways, but the biggest way is they keep adding new entitlement programs. And if you've got a limited pool of money and you keep you know, pulling uh, 
promising more and more things for people, uh, any any bank will go bankrupt under those circumstances. So I, I don't mean to belabor the issue, but sacrifice is going to be necessary for all of us. Increasing taxes needs to be way, way down the list. Fix a whole lot of things, including this uh, growing government bureaucracy we have before you even begin talking about tax increases. Okay. Um, what is uh, your position on e illegal immigration, and do you think it's a fixable problem? Uh, it is, the, in my view, the greatest um, law-breaking scheme in America's history, supported equally by the Democrat and the Republican Party. Democrats looking for a uh, new voter bloc, Republicans looking for cheap labor, both willing to overlook the law and our borders and the sanctity of our country. Uh, every president since uh, Jimmy Carter, and maybe probably before that, has contributed to this problem, including our current president. Um, I do think it's fixable, uh, contrary to, uh, to what I believe is mythology, that it's so complex that there's nothing we can do about it. It begins with employers. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I certainly reserve resentments for the, the governments that do such a poor job uh, that their people are running from their country. Can you imagine uh, running from your own homes to, to, to find a living, to find hope? Um, they, there's horror south of our borders, and uh, I put that firmly in the hands of those governments. And then there's our own government, which is behave in a very cowardly fashion by not looking out for our borders and protecting the sanctity of our country. But the ones that are feeding the flood with jobs and money are employers. And we're not holding them accountable. And we should. We should, um, uh, to, my, to my way of thinking, we don't need a, uh, an influx of new laws. We should begin enthusiastically enforcing the ones we have. Those who say we can't do that, I think, ignore the reality Try not paying your payroll taxes and see what the federal government does. Uh, they're, they're very enthusiastic about enforcing those laws. So go after the employers with fines and consequence. The best fence is consequence. Now, there are places on our border where a fence will work and work well. There are a lot of places it won't. The best fence will be creating consequences for the people who commit a felony by using false ID, and even more important, the employers who violate the laws and create the attractions. What is the proper role of the federal government in education? Get out of the way. Um, I'm a, I, I believe the federal government, the Constitution is not a just not just a hollow piece of paper that a bunch of guys got together and had nothing to be, better to do on a weekend. Um, it, it's the foundation of our country, and the more we ignore it, the more irrelevant it becomes. And so, um, uh, you know, I, 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 I believe we should our government does best if it, if it follows that program. It's not, and education is a good example. The, the further you get the leadership away from the reality, the, typically the more unrealistic the, the management is. Uh, federal government could, could perhaps serve a role in shining a light on what local communities accomplish with education, in other words, just sort of uh, giving us some measurements of how folks are doing, but beyond that, uh, I think it's uh, terrible the way they've kidnapped our the federal government, state government, teachers' unions, lawyers, bureaucrats of all sorts have kidnapped the classroom from teachers, students, families, communities, and principals, and uh, taken the heart out of our teachers and, uh, and parents in, in doing so. No wonder we have so many frustrated teachers. They're, they're operating under this bureaucratic overlay. federal government provides 7% of the educational bu budgets, by the way, for for, for schools, and then like 80% of the control, and that's that's not right. So get out of the way, answer, short answer. Uh, Dr. Mumpower, I know that your campaign speaks to the you know, campaign finance laws and uh, raising money, and I would like to know uh, if you could accomplish one thing in regard to changing campaign finance laws. What would you propose? Well, frankly, I, I would be more interested in, in reaching the minds and hearts of Americans than I would uh, changing the laws. Any, you know, anytime you, you, you change, uh, government intercedes and creates new laws that break something else, and nothing is a better example than campaign finance reform. We're running our own campaign finance reform.
program and our campaign, we're accepting no money from lobbyists. None. The only contributions we receive are from individuals. That's a, a, a very unique thing to do. I think we're the only congressional candidate in the country doing that. And it's, it's not an easy thing to do, but it, it simply comes down to this. I, I call it that Buy America Plan, or the Buy America Plan. What we're doing is letting special interest groups, unions, um, parties, and uh, other folks buy our congressional seats. And uh, rather than waste a lot of time changing, changing the laws, I, I'm more interested in just giving the American people or the people of our district an alternative, a clear alternative. You can, you can have someone trying to earn this, this seat in Congress, or you can elect someone trying to buy it, and it's, it's their choice. Um, between uh, fair tax and flat tax, which system do you like better, and what would be your ideal system? Well, fair tax, of all the, the tax reform systems uh, or proposals on the table, fair tax makes more sense to me than any of the rest of them. It's a, basically a consumption tax. It's not perfect. There's a couple of socialistic things in there that I, I don't care for, but devil's always in the details. The nice thing about the consumption tax is it puts us all on a level playing field. It's simple. Uh, it, it, it makes us what we believe in America we should be equals instead of rigging the deal where one group might get a better deal this decade and another group another decade and we, we, we kind of uh, it reminds me of Abbott and Costello's who's on first as to who gets the benefits out of our tax code um, it, it's too big what is it uh, I've heard different things 70,000 pages our tax code uh, it, it's uh, even higher than that. It's, it's in, it, nobody can understand it. I mean, who, who can understand a document that's even 70,000 pages long? Uh, so I like simplicity. And, and the big thing I like about it, fair taxes is much harder for our uh, government uh, bureaucrats and politicians to manipulate. And I think it's very important, whatever tax code system we set up, that it be designed in a way that it's, it's tough to, uh, to bend and, and, and twist personal advantage. Uh, I was with a group last night that really touts a single-payer health system. Uh, having worked for the federal government for a while, I really doubt that the federal government can be the single-payer. What do you think of single-payer well, health look at, plans? Great question. Let's look at uh, their, the government's history with Medicaid and Medicare. Um, they, uh, there's a, a bureaucracy run rampant, an unreliable system, and, and, and a very important consideration, an underfunded system. That's one of the things that I resent most about the federal government. It makes all these promises, doesn't properly fund them, and then transfers the cost over in a hidden tax to the rest of us. The federal government is one of the main reasons we have a health care crisis in America today. They're transferring the cost of these entitlement programs over to pri private payers and, and, and doing it on the sly. It's like their requirement that emergency, hospital emergency rooms care for anybody that comes in there, regardless of their ability to pay. Well, if they want to say, you're going to provide care for anybody, but we're going to help you pay for it, uh, or we will pay for it, that's one thing. But those unfunded mandates like that are, are, are sneaky, uh, undisciplined leadership, as far as I'm concerned. So I don't trust the federal government with our health care. If, 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 if folks find that they have a positive experience with the federal government, uh, its agencies, and they do a good job in managing such programs, well, great, maybe that's the way we need to go. But that's not my experience. I'm much more inclined to uh, borrow on our model of success, a free market economy, uh, provide tax credits for people to buy their own policies, and then get the doggone regulation and bureaucracy off of the medical system, which, by the way, doctors support as much <laughs> as the bureaucrats do, uh, then we can open it up and, and uh, well, let me come out and say it. I wish we could go see an MD or an RN or a physician's assistant at Walmart. Back at the turn of the last century, we had more physicians per capita than we have today. We have over-regulated, over-controlled what is today more of a science than an art form. The protocols for most medical conditions, I'd say 90 plus percent of them, you can read off of a computer. We've got it to a point where we could rock and roll on health care, get the cost way down, and we can reintroduce the free market economy, competition, deregulation, other things that open up the door and the possibilities. Now, of course, the argument is that, oh, no, if we deregulate, people will be dying left, right, and yonder. More people die from legal drugs in America than die from illegal drugs. Uh, our hospitals are one of the most dangerous places you can go into. They do a lot of wonderful things, 
But let's not pretend that government bureaucracy and regulations protect us all because I think nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, Dr. Mumpower, would you be in favor of phasing out and abolishing the corporate income tax? Can you guys ask me an easy question or two? Give me, give me a break. <laughs> the, uh, and I'm kidding. I, I like these. I appreciate the opportunity to just off the cuff uh, these things with you. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, c corporate uh, taxing corporations sounds good. Oh, big big corporations. Let's let's go after them. But what people don't realize is that corporations take profits and basically do two or three things. Uh, they invest those profits in new product research and development, or uh, capital improvements, or paying people. Whether it's paying the CEO or the guy laying his hands to the product on the assembly line. So they're, they're, th that money is taxed. What we have today is a system, a, a real convoluted system by the way, a system that is easily manipulated that some kind of companies take advantage of that encourages companies to go overseas, that makes us less competitive with foreign companies, that lets other governments rig the deal in favor of their companies over ours, and so, yes, I think uh, taxing corporations is one of those things that sounds good, doesn't work good, is easily manipulated, and I think we ought to come up with a fair tax code that when people get money, if, if we're going to have a tax code, when they get money, uh, in, tax individuals uh, rather than the corporations, and not pretend that, that, that somehow or another that uh, they're getting the good deal. Uh, as soon as they hand, as soon as a corporation hands their money to a fat cat CEO, then it's taxable. It's, it's a targeted, uh, taxable opportunity. But before then, I think we're undermining ourselves. I, America's industry is leaking out of our hands like sand, and we've got to tighten up. We've got to look at ways to put America first and save these companies if we're going to save our jobs. Um. On the immigration issue, a lot of you. Can, can I back up to one just a second, to, to that question just a second? I, I'm, I am not in favor of corporate welfare. I don't like corporations getting special deals. Uh, I think that's wrong. It's, it's, it's what, what we do. That's one of the reasons, by the way, lobbyists from corporations elect most of our, if not all, of our congressional candidates. Number one lobby in America is Chamber of Commerce. <clears throat> which, by the way, has a supportive position to illegal immigration, even though they may deny such. The number two, two lobbyist positions, medical lobby. Well, these folks aren't lobbying uh, just for out of goodwill. They're lobbying for their own special interests. I do not support that kind of corporate welfare. I do not support big business over the common good. But in the case of, of, of ta our tax system, we need to support corporations uh, in a way that supports the growth and development uh, of our country and the provision of jobs. People need a place to work. Sorry. Um, what I was saying uh, on the immigration issue, a lot of people <laughs> say that um, they illegal immigrants do the jobs that a lot of people don't want to do or we don't want to do. What would you say to that? Uh, that it's nonsense. Uh, statistically, illegal immigrants cover 25% of the jobs that people quote unquote don't want to do. The reason a lot of the a lot of people don't want to do those jobs as we've got this, uh, these government entitlement programs that help people sit down instead of stand up. But the biggest reason is uh, we're not letting the free market economy work like it's supposed to. If, if you can't find people to work in a local fast food restaurant, then by golly, you have to raise their, the salary range up to where people want to come work in the local fast food restaurant. Same thing for picking tomatoes. Now what does that mean? Will we pay more for a hamburger or more for tomatoes? Yes, but that's the way a free market economy works. What we're doing now is short-circuiting that system by importing uh, uh, cheap labor, I think exploiting cheap labor, and that enables us to do something that's very important to me. We're able to ignore our own children. We don't need them. We, don't, we can accept a 30% drop, a physical dropout rate, phys physical dropout rate. We can accept a, an even larger mental dropout rate, kids who come out of school without the skills necessary to compete in a tough world, 50% dropout rate for minority, even minorities even higher for black male students, 
And, and the business community should be screaming and yelling about that, but we're not because we don't need those young people. That's wrong. We've got this strong, good, young labor pool coming from Mexico, and, and I think we're shooting ourselves in the foot, shooting future generations in the foot by that. Uh, when we were taping this, uh, this very day, the federal government is bailing out huge businesses. Fannie Mae, who gave enormous contributions to several senators, including one of them who's running for president, for example. Um, what, what would your comment be about the involvement of the federal government in bailing out big businesses to save people, but not bailing out us little folks? Yeah, well, yeah, they're doing the opposite. Of, they're, they're taking water out of the, the big business boat and pouring it into our boat and, and, and going to swamp us. Uh, I'm, as I said, I'm not a believer in corporate welfare. Crooks come uh, wear a tie as often as they wear a mask, and, and I think that's what's happening now. And crooks can be politicians just as surely as they can be business CEOs. Uh, America, uh, the average American is being assaulted. And we have some, one of the folks in the room with us right now is in his mid-twenties. He should be furious at us old guys uh, for, for what we're doing to him. Because we're, we're well, Old and semi-old. The the uh, the uh, uh, we're 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 leaving a debt burden on our children and grandchildren that we should be ashamed of, and it's it's just that old fly now pay later philosophy that's governed uh, America in many ways for decades. And you know the Bible says it: neither a borrower or a lender be. And like almost everything that I've ever been able to find in the Bible, it's not a rule book of what's. Uh, right and wrong, it's a guidebook for what works and doesn't. And the system that we've had in place for all these years is not working now. The bills are coming due, and the fat cats are trying to shift it off on the rest of us, and the politicians and the federal bureaucracy are letting it happen. I'm against it, <laughs> in a big way. Yes, sir? Well, change gears a little bit, talking about education system in the United States. I'm in favor of somehow abolishing the Department of Education and having that responsibility shifted to local communities and maybe counties, maybe the states. How do you see that? Well, we, we touched on that a little bit earlier, and I, I agree. I, 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 I use the analogy of, uh, I had a couple of, of limited exposures to situations when I was in the service where um, a firefight would be going on on the ground, and I was with some FAC outfits, for air controller outfits, and then a firefight would be going on the, on the ground. There'd be a major or light colonel flying around in the UE up above the firefight, telling some poor lieutenant down on the ground how to fight the fight. Well, the further the, away from the reality you are, the more the, the worse the leadership is. Typically, and that's what we have in America today. Our education system's been kidnapped by the federal government and the state government. Uh, I'm, I'm for local control over education. Uh, let the free market system work. Let Madison County make their own decisions about education. Uh, they, uh, the, 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 the funding, the limited funding that comes to those systems comes with so many strings attached that it, it, it takes the accountability out of the equation. Anytime you get in a situation in, in, under any circumstance where you have responsibility without authority, you're in trouble. And that's what our teachers have today. It's what our principals have today. Our communities have, our parents have, they have responsibility, but no authority, and it doesn't work, and I do everything I could to undermine that. Love to abolish the Department of Education. Love to get right in the face of teachers' unions, too. Um, I'm with, not supposed to say that, but I, I believe it. With the, uh, the hurricane last week and the big hike in gas prices, uh, what, what's your position on drilling and energy policy and all that? Well, my opponent uh, is against drilling and uh, might speak to him a moment, and in favor of the 55 mile an hour speed limit. I, I hope that gets out in the media. I hope everybody knows that. Because uh, the older of us remember that those times during, under Jimmy Carter and mm -hmm. what nonsense that was. Any, anybody's free to drive 55, but forcing them to is another matter. Uh, I am an all of the above guy. I've been using that phrase for months before it came out in the media. I just really believe that. I would drill in my backyard and your backyard if I could. Uh, drill anywhere, everywhere, go after our best reserves, because when, when we drill, we not only get 
oil, we get natural gas, and that's a real problem now. And something people aren't thinking about, with, uh, or, or, or people that, that don't have to be concerned about aren't thinking about, it's not just the gasoline that we need, it's the heating oil. It's the natural gas. We're going to have people shivering their houses. We're going to have older folks on fixed incomes shivering their houses this winter because the, the price of fuel is so excessive. So drill, 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 and I don't believe this nonsense for a minute that if we, if we drill it'll take 10 years for it to get into the system. It will have an immediate impact, uh, psychological as well as uh, literal, on the system. And go after alternative energies. Heck, I had a solar panel on my house back in the 70s, and I'm all for that. Uh, go after the various, the ones that make sense. For example, corn-based ethanol does not make sense. Taking food out of people's mouths, um, uh, or out of people's tummies, really, uh, to feed our cars is, is just nonsense, and that's typical crisis management by the government. Um, I don't, uh, uh, but, I, but I do believe that there are alternative te technologies. I'll give you a good example. Um, Asheville's trolley system was run off the French Broad River uh, back in the beginning. Uh, electricity generated uh, from the flow of the river. Uh, same thing over in Bryson City. They had, uh, over in the North Shore area, they had uh, um, power before Bryson City did. The town seat did, and they were running off little paddle wheels in the, in the, uh, the river. Technology has a place. Alternative energies have a place. I'm for nuclear. We know how to do it safely. It's not perfect. Nothing is. But when you start talking about being cold, and when you start talking about breaking down a transportation-based economy and being poor, I think we better get real creative and real expansive in our energy policy. I believe finally that the last, the, the big thing that's going to save our, save the day for us is that big red ball up in the sky that uh, we're going to learn to tap into the sun with technology and it's going to be rescuous, as it does every day. Yes, and the most interesting story on television the other day was a 12-year-old, was he, who had developed a, instead of a 2D uh, photo cell, a 3D photo cell and was harvesting wow. lots more energy per square meter than uh, than the wow. current ones. Wow. And he's 12. That's America. And that's 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 the America we live live in yes. and love. Yes. Uh, we are working over the the city parking decks in the in Asheville. Mm -hmm. um, are we looking forward to the day when we want to have a, an outlet a plug uh, electric outlet at every parking place so we can charge up our Cars that go 40 or 50 miles on just plain electricity before the gas engine kicks in? George, I, you're the first guy I've, I've heard make that suggestion. That is very interesting. Uh, it's food, 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 food for thought. I don't know that we want the taxpayer uh, carrying the bill for that electrical uh, plug, but there's probably a way we can make that happen. Something to think well, about. Surely, if we charge enough to park, yeah. that they, they will then be paying. Yeah, but I can see the day coming. Something to think about, yeah. I think we're about to run out of time. Uh, Quick question? Well, I don't know how quick, but I wanted to ask you whether or not, in view of the recent publicity concerning your opponent's relationship with TBA and his partners, uh, would you encourage the uh, House uh, Ethics Committee to uh, take a look at those dealings? That, and that's up to them. I, I, I think the, uh, the clearly he was wearing two hats. He's he's regulating served on a board that regulates TVA and then he's benefiting from some of the TVA decisions. That's that's conflict of interest up to them to whether they do it, up to whether the, the voters choose to see that as an issue of concern. I'll tell you something I'd like to speak to is my opponent's unwillingness to debate. Uh, he's, he, he is not participating in a debate. He's already said that the forum, that's what they're calling it, the people are putting it on, and Murphy is the only face-to-face -face thing he's going to do. And I, I think for a guy who really put that as a big issue before, uh, to, to, to step away at this point. There's a little, little hypocrisy involved in that. Fellas, let me, let me say to you, I've enjoyed this opportunity. I appreciate the chance to be just spontaneously take these things on and do it in a relaxed, open fashion. Great questions. Uh, I'd like to say thank you f to you guys and thank you to WGCR Radio and the people of Transylvania County who are listening for this opportunity. Grateful for their interest, grateful for this opportunity.